Damn. That joint's sitting pretty good. Alright, so what is good, you guys? And welcome back to yet again another episode of J.I. Productions. As you guys see, I need gas yet again. <laughs> but in today's video, you guys see the title and you see the thumbnail. No, it's not clickbait. No, it's not cap. Yes, I did mess up on the uh, doing the Lowering Springs install. Um, <laughs> it's upsetting, but it is what it is. It could be definitely be way worse. Let me go ahead and roll the window down so you guys can hear what I'm talking about. I don't know if y'all can hear that, but it's like, yeah, you can hear it now. Okay, so basically, guys, to give you guys some context. So, as you guys know, I recently installed my iBob Lowering Springs. If you guys haven't seen that video, make sure you guys go tap in. Um, there will be a link at the end of this video, and I'll probably already put a card up so you guys can go tap into that joint. But when I was doing the install, you have to take off the rotors and the brake pads in the front um, so that you can get the strut to drop out completely. Now, with that being said, when I took the rotors off the front passenger and I was going to go reinstall them, um, for some reason, the pad wouldn't clear the rotor. Um, so I was kind of, you know, I ain't even gonna lie. I had smashed my finger a couple times. So I was upset and I was ready to be done. I'm not even gonna lie to y'all. So I kind of started like forcing the caliper on the rotor which ended up chipping my brake pad. So now I get that annoying screech, you know what I'm saying? Whenever I come to a stop or even drive the car. So with that being said, in today's video, we got some regular regular brake pads we're gonna be throwing on um, and hopefully that fixes the issue. Also, I need to go over my bolts and everything with the suspension to make sure everything is tightened and in place and everything like that. So let's go ahead and get straight to it. Finally got the tires off and to go ahead and start taking these pins off and everything. All right, y'all, so I got the inside pad out now, as y'all can see. And which you can see what I was talking about when I chipped a piece of the pads off. Yeah, take your time, guys. <laughs> and here's the other side. Now, this is the one that was really bad, that joint right there. Yeah, no go. All right, y'all, so just replaced the pads on both sides of the front. Yes, sir. No more noise. It was it was too annoying. But now we're on the rear. Remember I told y'all something had to be loose. I was hearing a noise. This is it right here. This end link right here is still loose from yesterday. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten that up and we should be good, man. All right, y'all. So maiden voyage right here to see if we fix the issue. Issue number one with the brake noise that I was telling y'all about, definitely fixed. Um, you know what I'm saying? That brake noise, this lady here, this is shit I be talking about with Houston drivers, bro. Anyway, that brake noise, um, as y'all seen, the pad was pretty, pretty fried. I can't even lie. So I was expecting the brake noise. I wasn't too worried about, uh, you know what I'm saying, hearing that. I already knew what it was gonna be. It was either gonna be that dust shield or the pad that, you know, kind of chewed itself away. <laughs> but yeah, man, as you guys can see, we are back on the road now. Um, luckily, you know, had some issues with getting the pads to go in at first, but finally got them to fit. Just, you know, that four piston life, if you guys have ever changed brakes on calipers that have pistons on them, four piston, six piston and up or whatever, and you guys already know, if you don't have like a tool or something like that, then nine times out of 10, you're gonna have the pistons kind of like bounce off of each other, if you will, to where you move one down and then the other one will go up and vice versa. So had a little bit of issue with that, finally got it to work. Um, and so we back on road with that. I went ahead and replaced both passenger and driver side uh, pads, just because I had the set and I'm not finna change just the passenger side and leave the driver's side. That's just, even though I'm gonna be switching, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna be switching over to power stops. That just doesn't really make any sense. 
to only switch one side. So I went ahead and, you know what I'm saying, swapped out both of them. Right now, hitting the same bumps that, you know, I was hitting normally and I would hear the noises on. And I think we back in action. It sounds, it sounds like normal, you know, road chatter, I guess you can call it. Um, like for real, it would be a little like, like noises where it would sound like the control arm just flexed a little bit or something um i know i showed you guys the sway bar end link showed you guys that that joint was loose um so the thing is it was not the sway bar end link i'm pretty sure all of you guys got down in the comment section down below and was getting ready to go ahead and roast me and tell me um, you know what I'm saying that them joints are allowed to have a little bit of play or slack or whatever um, I still ended up tightening them down just a little bit just to make sure you know for my peace of mind um, Because I did uh, you know go on there and loosen them in efforts to try to get that uh, The whole hub assembly to lower for me with the rear subframe um, So I went ahead and tightened that back up then I noticed that um the i guess it's the upper control arm bolt i'm not 100 percent sure on the terminology i'm sorry y'all but one of the bolts was loose uh evidently so i went ahead and tightened that up and i think i think we're good i think that did resolve the issue so honestly i'm gonna drive the car around a little bit you know i got class in a little bit so i will be going up to school today um and i'll just be you know keeping an ear out for any new noises making sure i don't hear anything out of the ordinary and um, if I do, then, you know, I will update you guys. If I don't, then you guys will probably hear me touch bases on it in the next video. But with all that being said, man, we are on the road to 3K. If you guys could please do me a favor and go ahead and smash that subscribe button for me right now if you haven't already. And just turn those post notifications on for the kid. And while you're down there, go ahead and give this video a big thumbs up. And drop a comment in the comment section down below. Let me know what you guys, uh, you know, were assuming that it was, what you guys thought it was. And um, if this was helpful for you guys, um, you know what I'm saying? Because these are things that people don't really talk about. Like when you go looking up the installs for the iBot lowering springs, they don't, people don't really talk about the issues that can come or the fails that you can get when installing them joints because it is very easy to, you know what I'm saying, mess up the brake pads when putting them back on the rotors. <laughs> um you know what i'm saying and other things that can really go wrong so honestly man if you take anything away from this video let it be one always double check your work two and i'm saying don't beat yourself up about spilled milk um stuff that you know you can't control bro and that just goes with you know car stuff and life stuff bro at the end of the day it's gonna be th some things in life that you you know what i'm saying just can't control things that are gonna go wrong and you can't fix them you're not gonna have the answer to fix them you know what i'm saying but you can't sit there and be upset about it or beat yourself up about it it is what it is you got to know that you got to keep pushing the world's gonna keep pushing so you can't stop over you know what i'm saying a little incident just like with this car stuff man if a part goes wrong or something breaks or you know what i'm saying you buy a new car and the fucking transmission goes out twice <laughs> back to back don't just give up on your dreams of like you know building cars and stuff like that just because of these little minor setbacks man you use these l's as a lesson uh, l is a lesson not a loss we never take any losses man you know what i'm saying so just keep that in mind but with all that being said, y'all, that's going to wrap it up for today's video. If you guys are new to the channel, like I said earlier, smash that subscribe button. Turn on those post notifications. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a big thumbs up and drop a comment in the comment section down below. I'm interested to hear what you guys have to say about how the car is sitting currently. Y'all let me know. And if you haven't already, make sure you check out the two videos that are going to pop up on your screen right now. It's been your boy, J.I., and I will see y'all in the next one.